Hi there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this week's update, I'm going to share with you a few garden fails that have been going on recently. And I think it's important to keep things real here because no matter what type of garden you are, whether you've got decades of experience behind you or if you're brand new, we all make mistakes. I guess we all make mistakes in life too, don't we? But the main thing about them is that we learn from them and try and not make them again. Now, as well as that, I'll also be showing you how the worms are settling into the new worm farm. And we have had a visitor um, coming into our chickens, but don't worry, it's not a snake or anything bad like that. So please just sit back and relax for a few minutes and let me show you around. We'll start off today over here in the raised garden bed area. There are a few edibles in here that I want to update you on. This is the fullest looking bed I have in this area. Some borage with their blue star shaped flowers. This slightly spicy red mustard green. Salvia plants. The flowers are pretty much finished now. I'll probably cut that plant back a bit some bronze fennel and this way have all the purple topped turnips. You may remember I sowed the seeds directly in here back in autumn alongside this other bed which has all of these beetroots. Turnips are in the brassica family and as well as being able to eat the green foliage on top, what I'm more interested in is what's happening down here with the main taproot. You can see there that it's um, beginning to swell up in a similar way to beetroots. I'll wait now until these parts are about the size of a tennis ball before I start harvesting them. Although they don't look like it now, Purple tops are one of the larger varieties of turnips. I do have a Japanese um, variety growing in one of the other beds, which is slightly smaller than this. So I'd harvest them at about the size of a golf ball. Over here in this bed, I've got my beetroots and I've thinned them out a few times. You can see there's a lot more space now between each plant. I still haven't got around to digging up these Johnny Jump Violas which have self-seeded. There's a big group of them here which I'll probably leave there because they'll fall over the edge. You can see that this one has a couple of flowers. Half eaten but you kind of get the idea of what they'll look like. I also popped in a calendula here on the edge just to spill over there and soften the edge of these beds and along this section here I actually ended up buying some little beetroot starts. You can see that they're roughly the same size as the ones that I direct sowed and not that it's any science experiment. I'm just really curious to see if there'll be much difference between the both of them. A really big garden fail going on here. This is the bed that I had all my carrot seedlings in. And there's not one single seedling left in here. It's completely blank. As usual, I feel like a broken record, but um, probably slugs and snails have done this damage. I'm going to re-sow it again this week. I'm not sure how they'll go because we are in the middle of winter, but I'm still going to try. The days are still warm enough here, so I'm hoping that the seeds will germinate and grow probably at a much slower pace than they would back in autumn. But I still, I'm, you know, I just love persevering with things. I really want this to happen. We'll head through the fan garden to go down to the chickens. Taking a quick look in here, so this is where all those calendula seedlings are, or where I should say, because there's only oh maybe two or three left. They um, all died off. I was thinking maybe it could be because the compost wasn't mature enough and it burnt the little seedlings. The cabbages are doing well. I do have a few holes here and there. I have been checking for the um, cabbage moth caterpillars. I have found a few, but not as many as I thought I would have an issue with. Um, I have noticed, I think I might have said this before, but just in case I haven't, I have noticed when I come to open the chickens that there's always birds in here. So I think they're coming here and eating those caterpillars for me, which is 
handy. So we've had this rooster come and visit our garden every day for the last couple of weeks. Um, she belongs to my neighbour. She actually has six roosters. <laughs> it's a bit of a long story. It's probably not my story to tell. Um, but yeah, this little fella here is quite fond of my chickens, aren't you? My neighbour has offered for us to keep this rooster, but unfortunately we are not allowed to have them, so I won't be keeping her. Plus, I don't really know how him, <laughs> him, plus I don't really know how I feel about, um, you know, having a male and the potential of having chicks. I just don't feel comfortable with that. I don't know enough about chickens and um, how to look after little baby chicks either. And yeah, so I'll probably have to unfortunately say no, but it is nice to have them in here. And the girls don't seem to mind too much. What do you think, Autumn? Do you like having them here? Along this fence line, there was a lot of overgrown jasmine and tree branches. Um, most of it has been cleared. The jasmine was just getting everywhere. It was going into my neighbor's shed and pulling it down. So um, they've cleared out a fair bit of it. Um, I just need to tidy up my side, which is a good job to do over winter time. And you can see down there, that's the cubby house, the old cubby house. Um, it's kind of collapsed as well. So I've got a fair few hours in here to tidy up this whole section. And because the jasmine's gone as well, and um, there's not really that much privacy anymore between our garden and the neighbors. So I need to start thinking about what I can put in here along this fence. And um, that's quick growing, probably some kind of native that, um, you know, will just make our garden a bit more secluded. It's been a couple of weeks since I set up this worm farm and I've started to put in a little bit of food scraps for them. And um, this is actually the second lot that's gone in here and they consume the first lot. There's one there about to go into hiding. Um, I haven't harvested any worm castings from here yet. It will take a while, probably another few weeks before I'll be collecting any of that but I'm pleased that they seem to be happy in here and doing their job at producing this lovely organic fertilizer for our garden. It won't be long now until I have poppy flowers again. In this container are Icelandic poppies, plenty of flower buds on these, there's a nice tall one I'm looking forward to seeing these open. Probably by next week, I should have some flowers to show you. There are a lot of flower buds on this bird of paradise. This one here that opened a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I did forget to show you that, so it has passed its best, but I will have plenty more coming on soon. And look at the state of this. Do you know what this is? This is the rootstock from the Passion Fruit Vine. Um, I brought this on myself. It has taken over the place. I had been warned. I think some of you told me about it last year to be careful of it and I didn't listen and now it's like all over the place. I am going to have a massive job this winter trying to dig all of this out and even having said that I'm not sure if I will be able to get it all. Um, I can only try my best. See, I left it in because I really loved how it was starting to sprawl over the top of this side gate into the back garden. I had always imagined some kind of vining plant growing over here. And when I noticed that this um, passion fruit vine or the rootstock of it was doing it, I just kind of left it. But now, yes, I do regret it. If I had pulled it out at the time and placed it with something like what I have down the back of the garden, the Bourgainvillea, that would have probably matured by now and created the same effect. And now in its place, I have this big weedy mess to try and tidy up. <laughs> I'm now in the back garden again. 
I enjoyed making this week's video because when I was walking around I saw a few things that really need to be done this weekend. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you're all keeping well and safe and I'll see you again next Friday.